You have birds, long care? And then he asks in the chat, will a cool season lawn look better on a liquid program, thicker, darker green with iron added, etc.? That sort of concept comes up occasionally, you know, liquid programs versus granular programs. I don't know if I've necessarily meant or discussed that specifically. You know what differences or what what I would recommend in terms of foliar versus granular applications or programs. I'm not sure if I've actually done that or not, but I can give you my opinion based upon my knowledge of the literature. But I don't know necessarily if it's going to translate into the, your specific situation. I don't I don't know if you have bluegrass or fescue or whatever. But I, I'm in my opinion. Um, if I were to build a fertilizer program, pretty much, I mean, to some degree, regardless of whether it's cool season or warm season, the majority of nitrogen would be going down as granular. Now, my, 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 my criteria is produce the best quality turf for the least amount of money. So if that's not your criteria, then it might differ. Um, or produce an acceptable quality, or maybe not best quality. Maybe that's not the right phrase, but the, an acceptable quality product for my for my um, clientele for the least amount of money to me, <laughs> the least cost. <laughs> so, um, if that's the priority, if that's your criteria, then I would lean heavily upon granular nitrogen sources because they're almost in every scenario. Well, in every scenario, they're going to be least expensive. You can't put out foliar nitrogen less expensively than granular nitrogen. I'm not aware of a way to do that yet. Um, so if that's true, then granular nitrogen would be the way to, or the way to put out <clears throat> nitrogen would be through a granular form. And, um, Phosphorus, potassium, I would only put out when there's a deficiency. And if there was a deficiency, I would probably put that out as granular as well. Because, again, because of the cost and the response of the response, the cost of the response is most likely less expensive than a foliar program. But after those three, N, P, and K as granulars, I would. I would use pretty much liquid for most everything else, which would only really include iron. Well, with the exception if you're doing pH adjustments, if for some reason you wanted to adjust pH, I would do that as a granular. But pretty much everything else would be liquid. But um, for the most part, everything else would just include iron. There's really not much value, and I don't have hardly any confidence in applying micronutrients except for iron and to some degree manganese you're not going to see much response of anything to the macros of like calcium or magnesium and any of the micros like boron or zinc or anything like that you're not going to really see much response to that at all except for in extremely unusual situations so will a cool season long look better on a liquid program i mean it would look fine on a liquid program i mean there's nothing wrong with that it would it would be fine it would just likely cost more money to do that and I'm not talking, I, I don't, I'm not including <clears throat> the reality of business logistics. What I mean by that is if you're not going to go out and buy spreaders because you already have the spray equipment, well, then spray it out. I mean, you already have the spray equipment and, and vice versa. In other words, like the cost of the actual machines and the cost of logistically putting it out and all those things. If you have your program built in a certain way, then. I don't know necessarily if I would sell the farm and buy all new equipment and put it out a different way. I don't know if I'd do that, but um, agronomically speaking is what I'm talking about. And then it's up to you all to figure out logistically what makes sense for your business in terms of finances. But agronomically, it's very difficult to beat a granular program of nitrogen and then only, <clears throat> excuse me, only apply phosphorus and potassium when it's deficient or when you've had a a pre-existing condition of low phosphorus or low potassium, that would be a, a valid reason to put it out. And then pretty much everything else is foliar. But it would look fine as foliar. If you did everything foliar, it would look fine. It just costs more, that's all.
what I'm what I mean by when I say is it acceptable, I mean is it acceptable to your clients? And that acceptable limit is going to likely change. You know, it's not the same from one house to the next. So when you say in the chat, it says, I like that mindset of keeping costs low, but clients usually hire a company to get better than average results. Usually they want a nicer lawn than the neighbors. What I'm saying is whatever criteria that that client is expecting or whatever threshold of acceptable quality that that client is actually expecting, that's what I mean by acceptable turf grass. So I don't know. I don't even know if anybody knows every acceptable level of every client, you know. But if it's a six on the quality scale, scale, then it's a six. If it's a seven, it's a seven. I mean, you can go up the quality scale however far you want. And let's just pick a nine. Let's say that you'd say you had a max quality, 365 days of acceptable turf grass is one thing. 365 days of maxed um, turf grass is another thing. In both of those scenarios, it's extremely likely that they would both be achieved the least expensive manner through using granular nitrogen than foliar nitrogen in both of those scenarios. And you can go back to the cost paper and look that up because it has in there not just the longevity, but the magnitude. So that paper I went over whenever it was last Wednesday morning has not just the longevity, but the magnitude. So the area under the curve is, it, it accounts for both the magnitude and the longevity. And if, if that's your criteria, then you can use that metric to um, help make your decision for you. And in both of those cases, it ended up being urea <laughs> and then ammonium sulfate. And if you want to use slow release, then sulfur coated urea. So regardless, I mean, that's, I get that question a lot, foliar versus granular. I would just pick the least expensive option that's likely to result in whatever expected level of quality that your clientele is looking for. And in most cases, that's going to be granular urea and then probably granular P and K. I mean, you can make an argument to have some foliar in there with P and K, but um, that's what I would lean heavily on if cost was if cost to produce the result is is your criteria.